So I am going to derive the Michaelis-Menten equation. I know there are a lot of videos on YouTube that do this already, but they don't include all of the math, which I feel like is crucial if you want to derive it yourself and not have to memorize any of the steps. So we start out with, here's our toolbox. We have the equation just generally talk that talks about enzyme substrate goes to enzyme substrate complex goes to products. And then we have the velocity based on this K2 right here. Now normally there's a K negative two right here, but because we're at T equals zero, we can ignore that, which is part of the steady state assumption. And we can also ignore, we can also say that the rate of formation of ES is the same as the rate of breakdown. So that allows us to set up an equation like this. So we want to have the rate of formation over here. So that's going to be based on the first part of the equation minus the breakdown. Which is going to be that right there. It's going to be right that equal to zero. Sorry if you can't. There we go. Right there. Right here. Okay? So now what I'm going to do is I want to bring all of the ESs to the same side. So I'm going to bring it over here. And it is going to become like that. So now I'm going to factor out an ES. Just like this. All right, so that's what we have so far. That factored that ES out. And then we're going to isolate ES by dividing by that K negative one plus K two. And interestingly enough, now we can start talking about the michaelis menten constant. So now here's where we are. That's where we, we have that E times S K, times K1 divided by K1 plus K2. Cool. Now, we're going to define a constant because we don't want to have all that rate, all those rates in our equation. So, we define the Michaelis-Menten constant. Why they defined it upside down, I don't know. You have to ask them. It's a question that I have as well. So then we define Michaelis-Menten as that. Km. Now, so let's plug that back into our original equation, which I just erased. So now we have ES equals E times S over KM, since those were, we just kind of flipped it over. So that's what we have right now, right, ES. Okay, so now um, we want to get all of this in relation to ES, right? So we have E and we have S. We want it to be related to ES and S because that's what, in the end, it's going to look like. So let's, we also know this, that E total equals E free enzyme plus the enzyme bound to the substrate. So we know, we know this right here, right? We know that right here. So why don't we substitute that we can solve for E. So we can solve for E up here by subtracting ES from E total and getting E total minus ES equals E. Great, so now we can put that back into our original equation for E right here, put all of that in there for E, right? Because that's equal to E. So now we have ES equals E total minus ES all times S over KM, right? So that's what we have now, right here. That's what we got right now, right? So now I'm going to split up. I'm going to first distribute that S 
And then I'm going to split them up into fractions right here. I'm going to split those up into fractions. All right. So now we're going to have, I'm going to kind of skip the distributing stuff. I'm going to assume you guys know how to do that. Um, e total S over KM minus S times ES over KM. So I'm going to erase all this stuff up here. Did that. All right, so this is what we are left with right now. Sorry, get that KM out of there. This is what we're left with right now. So I'm going, I still want ES's on the same side. So now I'm going to move this guy right here, this guy right here. I'm going to move him over here. So then we're going to come up with. So now this is what we have after we move it over. ES plus S times ES over KM equals E total times S over KM. Now, more factoring. We're gonna factor out an ES because that occurs in both terms right here. And then you're left with one plus S over KM. Not, and be careful that KM is only with the S. It's not with the whole thing. That screwed me up before because then you're going to get some sort of reciprocal. You're going to, then KM is going to end up canceling and that will be a problem later on. So just remember that the KM is only with the S. And so that's still going to be equal to E total S times K over KM, right? So that's where we're at right now. So now I'm going to, I still want ES by itself. So now I'm going to divide this whole term over here. So this, all of this is going to go in the denominator of this fraction right here. So then ES, magical, right? It's going to equal E total times S over 1 plus S over KM times KM. Okay, well, you know that you need to distribute the KM just like we've been doing before. So this is what we have right now. We have this whole equation. So now notice we need to distribute the KM on the bottom. So now ES is going to equal E total times S over KM. And then the KMs cancel out in this one. So you get KM plus S. Man, this is starting to look like what we want it to look like, right? So now let's go back to our original equation here for v sub zero for v. Keep this. I'm going to keep our bottom. I'm going to keep that one right there, that bottom equation, because that's what we're going to use. So now we had we had this, right? We had v sub zero v naught equals e s times k two, right? That's what we had. So now I'm going to plug in that e s that we just calculated right down here up into there. So now we're going to get v sub zero equals e total times s plus s times k2. Okay, what else we can say is that v max equals e total times k2, which it does. So now we can substitute in this for these in the equation right there. And then we're going to get v sub zero equals v max times s over km plus s. And that is our final Michaelis Menten equation right here. So that's how you derive it. I hope you found this video helpful and feel free to give me suggestions on in the comments. Thanks.